So I'm very pleased to introduce today's speaker for the third seminar, Professor Mu Bin Lu from Peking University in China. He's somebody whose papers I have been reading since I got started in SPH uh, and whose book uh, is on my shelf. He, he wrote one of the first books or maybe the very first book on SPH. Uh, he works on uh, CFD and SPH uh, and other particle methods and particularly on the coupling of SPH with a uh, finite element method and other methods for fluid structure interaction problems. Uh, we will have time for a uh, discussion at the end, so feel free to put your questions uh, in the chat or raise your hand. And we will be recording this session and uh, it will go on YouTube uh, when it's ready. Uh, so uh, very much looking forward to your, oh, and uh, a small bit of news, well, uh, quite a big bit of news, Professor Liu was recently promoted to uh, a full professor with tenure uh, at Peking University. So congratulations, Mubin. So uh, very much looking forward to your talk, Mubin. Okay, thank you a lot, eh? and uh, thank you all. And uh, hello, everyone. And I'm, I'm Mubin Liu from Peking University. And uh, Today, uh, I'm very happy to have this chance to introduce my work here. And uh, the title of my presentation is Smooth the Particle Hydrodynamics for Modeling Fluid Structure Interactions. And these are my students, postdoctoral researchers, and collaborators. Before I start my presentation, I will briefly introduce my university. The Peking University actually is the most beautiful university in China. As just mentioned by uh, Prof. Ladan, I'm just uh, promoted to the tenured full professor in Peking University. Actually, uh, previously Peking University is, uh, was taking the old system. I'm, I'm already the professor, but uh, from last year, we will uh, gradually turn to the US uh, system, the tenure track system. And uh, actually, I'm the first one who get promoted to the tenured uh, full professor in our department of mechanics. And uh, uh, Peking University actually was originally the Imperial University of Peking and uh, founded in 1898. And uh, the engineering branch was established in 1910. And uh, uh, it was later merged to Tsinghua University and uh, Tianjin University in 1952. In 2005, we established the College of Engineering. And uh, last year, we have had the fifth anniversary of our College of Engineering. And uh, uh, we have seven uh, departments in our College of, uh, of Engineering. And uh, I'm at the Department of Mechanics. I'm also the uh, adjunct professor of advanced manufacturing and robotics. Actually, the College of Engineering is expanding and we are recruiting uh, new faculty members from different levels, uh, from assistant professor to full professor. So if you are guests are interested, please feel free to let me know. And uh, my research team focused on uh, advanced computations and multi, uh, material mechanics. Actually, uh, we are developing a computational algorithm for uh, grid-based methods, particle-based methods, including SPH and uh, hybrid models, including SPH company with FEM and so on. And uh, using these computation algorithms for different uh, fluid structure interaction problems uh, in ocean engineering, uh, in uh, damage and protection, include due to the explosion and impact. And uh, actually, recently, we also uh, extend this method to uh, particulate flows, which is a special type of fluid structure interaction. And we use this method to the whole process modeling of additive manufacturing. And now let's move to the uh, main presentation. This is the outer line of the presentation. And uh, uh, first, I will briefly introduce the background of the uh, of my talk, and then we'll focus on the SPR modeling for uh, fluid structure interaction with rigid bodies with elastic structures and with extreme loadings. And finally, I will uh, give the conclusion. OK, as we know, fluid structure interaction frequently uh, exists in engineering and science. 
Here are some typical examples, uh, the wave impact, water exit, underwater explosion, and impact and the penetration. And for these uh, FSI problems, uh, we can see there are some typical features, including free surfaces, deformable boundaries, moving interfaces. And these are quite difficult for the Eulerian grid based methods, such as the finite difference method. Well, they also have large deformation, and this can be difficult for the Lagrangian grid based methods, such as the finite element method. Also, this kind of uh, FSI problems uh, has the uh, complex mesh generation and mesh adaptivity. These are also quite uh, difficult for both FDM and FEM. We can see uh, for the Lagrangian grid based method, such as the finite element method, the grid moves with the objects. Therefore, it's easy to get time history of movement and deformation, and also convenient to track moving features. But it's very difficult to treat large deformation due to the uh, mesh entanglement. Well, for the uh, Eulerian grid based method, such as the finite element method, finite difference method, and the grid is fixed on the space and uh, it's easy to treat large deformation, but it's very difficult to get time history and to track moving features. We need special algorithms like the volume of, uh, uh, of fluid or level set or phase field, something like that to treat, uh, track or treat the uh, moving features. Well, particle-based methods such as SPH actually combine the advantages of FDM and FEM and therefore is very attractive in modeling fluid structure interactions. However, there are still uh, challenges for modeling FSI with SPH. The first one is how to improve accuracy. For this, we will report an uh, approach called the finite particle method integrating with the uh, particle shifting technique. The second uh, challenge is how to improve accuracy. For this, uh, I will report uh, the smoothed particle animal method, which we call SPAM. And the third one is how to mod FSI with extreme loadings due to uh, explosion and impact. And for this, we will report our density adaptive technique. Okay, let's move to the second section, how to uh, mod FSI with the SPH method for uh, FSI with rigid bodies. As we know, the SPH method actually uh, was originally invented for solving astrophysical problems in three-dimensional open space. And the method uses a weight function, which we call smoothing function, to describe continuous or discrete field function, which we call kernel uh, approximation or particle approximation. For example, for the uh, particle approximation, a field function f or its uh, derivatives uh, can be approximated by using the average summation by the field function f multiplied the, uh, by the smoothing function and the volume, and also by multiplying uh, multiplied by the derivative of the smoothing function. By using this kind of kernel and uh, uh, particle approximation, it's uh, possible to discretize any type of partial differential equations. For example, for modeling the fluid flow, uh, governing by the NS equation, we can have this kind of uh, SPH equations of motion uh, for uh, discretizing the uh, density, momentum, energy, and also the strain rate. And uh, for modeling uh, the uh, FSI with rigid bodies, we also need the equation for the rigid body. These are the translational and the rotational equation for the rigid body. Actually, when modeling the uh, uh, FSI with rigid objects, we can always put solid particles in the rigid body and then let these particles to interact with fluid particles to implement the interaction of fluids and rigid bodies. Therefore, we can calculate the force of fluid particles due to the solid particles and also calculate the force on solid particles due to the fluid particles. Therefore, after uh, uh, 
calculating all the force and the momentum on the rigid bodies, we can implement the interaction of fluids and rigid bodies. Well, all these are uh, textbook knowledge. Well, one, uh, uh, one thing is that, as we know, the conventional, the original SPH method is famous for its, uh, is notorious for its poor accuracy. And uh, around 50 years ago, we proposed the so-called finite particle method, which is actually an improved uh, SPH method. It can improve SPH method to second order accuracy or even higher. And, uh, uh, but one problem is that uh, the FPM uh, is associated with uh, computational instability, especially uh, for the highly irregular particle distribution. As we can see, the FPM actually improves the SPH method through this kind of particle-based gradual matrix. If the particles are uh, irregularly distributed, this uh, gradual matrix can be ill conditioned. So uh, this can cause computational instability. How to uh, resolve this problem? And we integrate the particle shifting technique into the finite particle method. Uh, to resolve this problem, to ensure both accuracy and uh, stability. Well, the particle shifting technique, as I, I think many of us um, uh, know, was uh, originally proposed by Xu and Ning et al. And this uh, uh, technique is very, is very useful for the SPH method, as, can, as it can regularize the particle distribution, that means to make the particles distributized more regularly. And therefore, it can avoid uh, ear conditional metrics in the valid, animal, uh, in the valid uh, particle method. Uh, therefore, uh, it can remove the computational instability problem. That means uh, this uh, PSD actually makes FPM more stable. Well, when implementing the PST, uh, it will they will uh, involve the uh, approximation of the derivative. When uh, approximating the derivative, we can use the finite particle method with higher order accuracy. That means when we're integrating FPM with PST, FPM actually makes PST more accurate and the PST makes FPM more stable. Therefore, uh, this model FPM integrating with the PST is, uh, can balance uh, computational accuracy and stability. And here are some examples. And this one is the water entry of a uh, rigid wedge. And we have uh, say I have four uh, pressure uh, probes here. And uh, uh, here we record the pressure uh, profile for uh, these four points and uh, compare with them with the experimental observation. And we can see both the pressure field and the magnitude agree quite well with the experimental results. And the second example is the uh, using this model to model the uh, oil spill and uh, uh, containment with oil boom. And this actually is a two-dimensional uh, numerical wave tank. And this movie shows the oil spill and the containment with the uh, developed FPM integrating with PST. And we can see this model uh, can well reproduce different uh, failure modes of the oil boom can obtain the interaction mechanism of oil boom with water and oil and the wave current environment. Okay, and uh, the third example is the sedimentation of rigid particles, which are very uh, important in the ocean engineering and the civil engineering, environmental engineering. And uh, uh, our uh, PST uh, integrating with uh, uh, FPM, this model, uh, we can consider uh, thermal convection, bosonic effects, particle particle collision and uh, different particle shapes. Well, uh, this uh, movie shows the sedimentation of hard particles in cold water. And this one shows the sedimentation of many particles with different sizes and shapes. And uh, for uh, 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 a number of cases, and uh, they obtained the results, including uh, drag coefficient and the sedimentation speed. They are very quite well with the experimental results or the results from other resources. Now let's move to the uh, third section, uh, modeling FSI with elastic structures. Uh, as we know, uh, the, some conventional FSI models uh, uses uh, grid-based methods. 
uh, with FDM, FEM, or FVM, and it also face the same challenges with uh, moving interface and large deformations. And recently, the company approach of FEM, company with SPH, is very attractive, as they can be implemented in a united Lagrangian frame with no convective term, and it's therefore easy to treat moving features and large deformation. And this figure shows the uh, implementation of the conventional FEM company with SPH. The sorted areas is, uh, 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 is uh, treated using the uh, fellet element method. And these are the governing equations. And uh, the fluid areas are treated using the SPH method. And uh, uh, these are the uh, governing equations. Also, uh, for the interface, we must uh, rigorously implement the interface treatment uh, uh, including velocity and stress. One problem is that for this conventional FEM SPH company approach, the FEM is uh, fixed for the sorted area and the SPH is fixed for the fluid area. This actually is not flexible and will cause no accuracy. By considering this, we have proposed a, a smooth particle animal method. Uh, the basic idea is that the fluid and structure areas, initially they are all modeled using the Lagrange pilot animal method, which we use the smoothed pilot animal method. And for large deformation areas, we will convert the pilot element into SPH particles. Well, for the rest areas, that means uh, no uh, small deformations and uh, the smoothed Finite element is still used. And this span has uh, several key techniques. The first one is uh, we will use higher order SPH algorithm, in, uh, uh, that is the finite particle method. And also we use the improved FEM model, that is the uh, smoothed finite animals, animal method, SFEM. And again, we use this Lagrange SFEM for modeling fluid flow and structure. And uh, so we have this kind of particle element conversion and coupling technique. Well, we will uh, skip the, uh, uh, the finite, animal, uh, finite particle method uh, as the higher order SPR method. We will uh, focus on the uh, second key technique, the smooth, the, uh, the finite animal method, SFEM for fluids and structures. And uh, they are used for areas with small or non deformations. This uh, SFEM actually uh, is the improved version of the conventional uh, FEM with gradient smoothing technique. That means uh, in the conventional FEM, we can calculate the uh, uh, derivatives and for example, the, the, the uh, velocity. Well, in this SFEM, this, density, this velocity will be uh, uh, treated using the gradient smoothing as the average the summation. By using this treatment, the origin, uh, original FEM method uh, can be uh, can be solved. That means this FEM overcomes the over stiff problem for the conventional FEM and is uh, very useful, especially for the triangular mesh. And this SEM, FEM uh, is used for both the fluid area and the structure area and uh, uh, with small or non deformations. And uh, for the fluid area, uh, just as the weakly compressible SPH, uh, here we use the uh, weakly compressible concept into the SFEM to model the incompressible flow as slightly uh, compressible. And, uh, the third technique is the automatic conversion of the FEM elements to SPH particles. And we have the conversion and uh, uh, coupling technique. Here, actually, uh, for the uh, FEM section, if uh, for some areas, if we have large deformation, and these areas will, will be, these uh, elements will be converted into SPH particles. And uh, uh, also, uh, when coupling the uh, uh, interaction of particles with uh, uh, FEM elements, we will also uh, generate water particles in the uh, in the element area, uh, 
uh, to Im implement the element and uh, particle company approach and also to treat the interface stress and uh, velocity. Okay, here are some examples of the uh, spam. And uh, the first example is the dam breaking problem. And uh, uh, this movie, I uh, uh, hope you can see, uh, and actually shows the uh, evolution of the dam uh, clamping process. And uh, uh, this figure shows the pressure field. As we can see, uh, the uh, pressure field is quite smooth. And uh, we can also see here uh, the, the element and the particle conversion in this area, the uh, pressure field is, quite, is also quite smooth. And uh, this one is the dam breaking with an elastic plate uh, placed before the bottom column. And uh, here uh, we can see the, uh, the, the uh, spam uh, results of required wear with our available resources uh, for both fluids and structures. The third example is the liquid snorting. Uh, this movie shows the uh, whole process of the liquid snorting, and uh, this figure shows the results of our results uh, with the results from other resources. And uh, we also can see the results from the spam model of required well with experimental results. And uh, uh, actually, I think the results are better than the conventional FEM SPH results. And uh, the first example is the water entry of an elastic plate. And also we can see the pressure field is quite smooth. And here actually we have the uh, finite element mesh and also have the, uh, the, the conversion uh, process here. And uh, the pressure field uh, is also smooth and correct compared to the uh, uh, results from uh, other references. I think uh, the spam results are quite good, uh, more accurate than the uh, available FEM and SPH results. Most importantly, at this spam method, uh, in this method, we uh, cover the FEM with SPH and this company and uh, are automatically uh, implemented. That means they are not implemented in the fixed domain. That means uh, in large areas, we can use the finite element method where for uh, some uh, areas with large deformation, these areas uh, usually are very small and uh, we can use the SPH method, the FPM to uh, get uh, good accuracy. That means uh, we use this spam, the computational accuracy and the computational stability as well as computational efficiency can be well balanced. We can see from this uh, table, uh, uh, we uh, compare the uh, computational time for different approaches. This one is the conventional FEM with a uh, coupling with SPH. And this one is the spam dynamic coupling. And this one is the uh, fixed coupling of SFEM with SPH. We can see uh, by using this dynamic coupling, the, uh, the, the spam actually improves the computational efficiency for all around the 10 times. Okay, let's move to the uh, fourth section, uh, modeling FSI with uh, 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 extreme loadings. Actually, uh, we might know the SPH method is very attractive in modeling explosion and uh, impact separately. Well, uh, as the SPH method can well treat the large deformation, well treat the moving features, but for problems with coexisting explosion and impact due to the a uh, large density ratio of the metal material to the explosive gas, the conventional SPH method meet challenges uh, for more than this uh, kind of problem. They are usually uh, uh, associated with uh, computational instability. Therefore, reliable models must be developed to treat the large density ratio uh, with the, for the problems with coexisting explosion and impact problems. Well, uh, for modeling the explosion problems, the governing equation uh, are the uh, Eulerian equation. And for uh, modeling the, uh, the, 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 the solid structures, the governing equation actually are very, the, the continuum equation. And they are very much like the uh, NS equation. Well, the only difference is that uh, the stress, uh, we need to calculate the stress from some kind of uh, continuum uh, model. Uh, such as the Jones-Cook model for metal material. And uh, 
for the pressure part is uh, the same as the uh, when we are uh, calculating the pressure of water, we can use some kind of uh, equation of state. Well, uh, as I just mentioned for problems with coexisting explosion and uh, impact problems, large density uh, ratio exist. And uh, uh, actually for this, we uh, developed this, uh, uh, our density adaption algorithm and uh, which uh, actually involves a mixed uh, form of two density approximation approaches. The first one, uh, actually, these two uh, density approximation approaches are frequently used in the SPH method. And the first one, we can see it involves density. Uh, it doesn't involve density and uh, it's not able to model very large density ratio. But for this uh, uh, approach, the computational accuracy is comparatively good. Well, the second approach, uh, we can see it involves density in the approximation and it's possible to model varying large density ratio, but this approach uh, is associated with poor accuracy. Uh, therefore, we combine these two approaches by considering the uh, large density ratio into this kind of uh, uh, mixed form, and uh, we can use them to uh, treat the large density ratio in the explosion and impact problems. And actually, by changing the uh, the parameter k uh, uh, or, or phi, actually we can change uh, this kind of mixed form from the first one and to the second one. And uh, we are very happy to see that by using this kind of density adaptation technique, is uh, we resolved the density ratio uh, that the, the computational instability problem arises from the large density ratio. Here we give the uh, several examples. The first example actually are very dash examples. The first, this one is the one dimensional TNT detonation explosion. And uh, uh, this uh, TNT uh, slab detonates from the left end and the uh, detonation uh, uh, wave will propagate rightwards. And this figure shows the uh, pressure for, uh, profile and it will finally converge to the experimentally determined CJ pressure. And this one is the uh, validation case of impact welding, which is a uh, very, uh, which involves the uh, impact of a flare plate impacting onto a substrate at a very high speed at around uh, one, uh, 1000 meters per second. And uh, these are the obtained uh, impact velocity. Uh, is very close to the uh, experimental results. And uh, th these two cases are uh, explosion and impact separately. Actually, here we will uh, apply this density adaptive model to uh, explosively driven problem. That means with coexisting explosion and uh, impact. The first one is the shaped charge explosion. The shaped charge is actually a special charge with one hole cavity at one end and detonates at the other end. This is an illustration of a typical shaped charge. This is the detonator and this one is the high explosive. These are the metal case and lander. Upon the uh, detonation, uh, the high explosive will, uh, uh, will drive and accelerate the, uh, the, the, the uh, metal case and uh, the uh, metal lander to form a very strong, a very powerful metal jet, and this metal jet can be used to penetrate hardened targets. And and these are the uh, this animation shows the, uh, the the modeling of the shaped charge explosion with case of uh, without uh, metal case. We can see uh, when uh, for both cases uh, with or with case the jet speed and the jet length actually there are not much difference. But uh, when we have the uh, metal case uh, here and uh, the jet tip will be sharper. That means the uh, metal jet and uh, the, 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 the uh, metal case actually will cause this kind of uh, explosion to have a much stronger converging effect. And uh, uh, this movie shows the whole process of uh, shape recharge detonation, explosion, the formation of uh, uh, metal jet and the penetration uh, process. And uh, this figure shows the experimental 
uh, observations and SPH modeling. And uh, we can see the uh, process and also the figures are quite close. And also this figure shows the energy uh, history during the penetration process. The, uh, the energy con uh, conservation is quite good. And finally, when we apply this uh, density adaptive approach to a very interesting application, the explosive welding, which uh, uh, is very uh, frequently uh, used for both military objects, uh, uh, projects and uh, civil services. And uh, in this uh, explosive welding, actually the flare, the, the, the flare plate is driven and accelerated by the detonation of the high explosive and uh, causing the flare plate, uh, plate uh, impact on the base plate of, of the substrate. And this will cause some very complex phenomena, uh, including the formation of the particle jet. And uh, also, uh, if for successful welding, we, we will uh, form some kind of uh, uh, wavy interface. Well, uh, for this, uh, for, for this, uh, explosive welding, which we can see it involves a uh, quite complicated process and uh, complex phenomena is very difficult, very challenging for uh, conventional method. Actually, for this one, the commercial software, uh, LS10 uh, and uh, also then and so on, is not easy to uh, model this kind of problem. And uh, there are some researchers, they have modeled this explosive welding. But most of the work actually use simplified models. That means they don't consider the explosion and the detonation effects of the explosive. They simply uh, they simplify this uh, explosive welding as the impact welding. And these two examples, the, the, the last one, actually do consider the real physics, considering the detonation and the explosion physics. But in their modeling, as we can see, they are not, not able to get the real physics, including the uh, wave interface or metal jet. Okay, and uh, this movie shows the uh, whole process of the ex explosive welding by using the density adaptive SPH. Uh, we can see the detonation of the explosives, the driving effects of the flare plate, the wave interface and the jet formation are well reproduced. And uh, all these are really reported before in literature. And uh, uh, these two figures shows the pr uh, pressure uh, distribution at the two typical uh, time stones. And uh, uh, these figures actually shows the generation of, and evolution of the wave interface. We can see with the increase of welding angles, the wavelength increases all the time. Well, uh, the wave height increases to a maximum value, and thereafter the, uh, uh, the amplitude will uh, later decreases. And all these are quite well with the experimental observations. And uh, uh, by using different uh, model parameters, we can get different explosive welding, the uh, welding and the wave interface uh, from stretch interface to wave interface to wave interface with vortex shading. And actually we have uh, uh, comprehensively investigated this uh, interface and we, uh, uh, we think this uh, wave interface with vortex shading uh, uh, is very much similar to the formation of the Vonkami vortex street. And all this will reproduce the morphology evolution of the welding interface. And uh, 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 this movie, uh, this figure shows the uh, temperature distribution for the explosive welding process. And uh, uh, one thing is that in the explosive welding, and uh, uh, it's usually regarded to be not good if the uh, interface region is melted. So by using the SP density adaptive SPH model is uh, possible to optimize the model parameters. That means we can get ideal uh, explosive welding performance. Well, the interface area uh, is uh, also associated with wave interface with a shade, uh, vortex shading, but the interface region is 
is approaching um, uh, approaching mel melting point, but it's not get melted. And uh, uh, these figures actually shows the jet formation. Uh, we can see for different uh, uh, welding angles and the welding material, we can get different uh, jet, form jet formation performance. Uh, then actually the ejected material and the particles increases with the welding angle, regardless of the interf interfacial morphology. And uh, uh, we found that the ejected particles are mainly composed of the materials with low density. And these are very close to the experimental observations and also uh, will reproduce the jet formation process. And uh, uh, as we can see, the explosive welding, the performance of the explosive welding is dependent on many motor parameters such as the separation of the two plates, the welding angle, the uh, uh, type and amount of the explosives. And uh, so it's not easy to control the performance of the explosive welding. So after numerous uh, numerical simulations, we have uh, developed our numerical variability windows for the explosive welding. And here in this figure, we can see uh, for the idealized, for the ideal explosive welding, uh, the, 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 for in this area uh, filled with blue dots, the, uh, in the uh, two plates can be well bonded together, where well, the interface, uh, uh, wave interface with vortex shading, and uh, uh, the interface is approaching melting point, but it's not get melted. Well, for this uh, gross then, uh, actually there, are, there is no bond. Uh, and uh, for this uh, uh, triangular then, the uh, interface actually is very stretched. And uh, for this uh, uh, square sense, the, uh, the, the, the uh, explosive welding is successful, but it is not good enough. That means the interface region is, uh, is already melted and this is not uh, good in the uh, explosive welding performance. And uh, now let's uh, move to the conclusion section. Uh, in this talk, actually, we uh, report uh, several uh, techniques. The first one is the finite particle method integrated with the particle shifting technique. We can uh, use them to ensure both the accuracy and the stability, uh, stability of the computation. And also, we reported the uh, smooth particle element method. And uh, this method leverages the advantages of SPH and SFEM and can improve both accuracy and efficiency. And lastly, we reported the density adaptive model and is effective for multi-phase and multi-material flows, especially those with large density ratio is, uh, for problems with coexisting uh, explosion and impact problems. And these models have been used uh, for applications uh, in FSI with rigid objects, uh, elastic structures, and extreme, no uh, extreme loadings. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. That was really, yeah, uh, really interesting, uh, really uh, thought provoking. Uh, and really impressive results in some challenging engineering applications there. Okay, uh, who would like to uh, start with questions? 